Hello everybody, my name is Isaiah Stapleton, an Associate Software Engineer on the Red Hat Research Team, and I've been working on the Open Education Project. And today, I'm going to be demoing the Open Education Project to you and showing you what you can do with the Open Education Software Development Kit. This demo is going to go over the following. Creating a new project, which includes the use of the OPCLI tool, a book section where I will go over creating a new book, editing book configuration, creating content, and publishing the book. The container section will go over building, modifying, and publishing container images, as well as customizing previously built images stored in a container registry for new environments. I will end the demo by showing you some published OPE books so that you can really see the power of the open education framework. First, I'm gonna be showing you how to create your own OPE project. An OPE project is essentially a collection of OPE style books and their content, as well as the associated container images. Before I create a new project, I will install the required dependencies. The two dependencies that will need to be installed are JupyterBook and GHB import. These can be installed easily through PIP. Now that these are installed, we can go ahead and create a new project. In order to create a new project, I will use the OP CLI tool. This tool includes a variety of functions for handling projects, books, and containers so that you can easily create, update, manage, and publish OPE projects from the command line. I will go ahead and clone the tools repo from the OP effort organization on GitHub. Once this is done, I will CD into the tools directory and activate the install script. This install script instructs me to run the following command, so I will do so now. Once this is done, you will be able to use the OPE CLI tool. Now, in order to create a new project using the OPE CLI tool, we must first create a new repository on GitHub that will act as the repository for the new OPE project that we are creating. I will name this one OPE Demo. Once this is done, I can use the new project command from the CLI tool in order to create the new project. This command takes two parameters, a project name as well as a link to the repository that will act as the repository for the OP project. I will name the project OP demo and provide the link to the repository that I just created. Now that this command is done, you can see that the project has been pushed to the repository that we just created. I will take a look at the layout of this new project. As you can see, there are three main directories here, books, containers, and content. Books and containers are empty as we have not yet created any books or containers. The content directory serves as the directory where book content will be stored. There is also an examples directory within the content directory that contains example book content and configuration. Instead of taking a look at these examples, I will show you how to create your own book, edit the book configuration, create content for that book, and then publish that book. Create your own book, navigate to the books directory, and run the OP new book command. You must give this command the name of the book being created. I will call it my first book. You can now see that this book has been created. Within the book, you can see this content directory, but this content directory is actually just a symbolic link to the content directory that I showed you before. I'm now going to open up my preferred text editor in order to edit the book configuration. As you can see, after running the new book command, there are three new files and a new directory within the content directory. The file I'm going to take a look at is the config.yaml file. Here you can change the book settings such as title, author, copyright year, um, and a path to logo you'd like displayed in your book. You can also change um, the repository that is going to be the published URL for the book. I'm going to change these settings here as well as provide the correct GitHub URL. There are also other configurations, additional configurations that you can change within this config file. You can go to this link here to learn more about what you can configure with this file. 
but for now, I'm happy with my book configuration. I will now take a look at the intro.md file. This file will be the landing page for your book. I will make some changes here. Let's now take a look at the talk.yaml file. This file acts as a skeleton for the book and specifies the layout of the different parts, chapters, and sections. It may help you to look at an already published book to understand this. Here you can see the OPE user guide and that we have the landing page, specified in the intro.md file that we just edited, as well as the different parts and chapters to the book. So where it says here, caption part one, over here, that is the introduction. So I want an introduction for my book, so I will create an introduction here. I'm now going to change how I lay out my books manually within the content directory. I prefer to create a directory that has the name of the book within content and then have the different parts, chapters, and sections within that directory. So I will do that now. I now have a directory within content with the name of the book as well as a directory within that that has the name of the first part of my book. This just helps me to keep things organized. I must now edit the talk.yaml file to point to the correct path for both the chapter and the section. This path is relative to the talk.yaml file. Let's now edit the content within the first chapter and section of the introduction. to also make sure I'm updating the path in the talk.yaml file to the correct IPYMB file for this chapter. Now that I'm happy with the edits that I've made to my book, let's see how we can build our static book content and then publish it. Let's first navigate to our book directory and run the OPE build command. Since I'm already here within the directory, I will just run the OPE build command. When this is done, you will get a link that you can go directly to the static HTML content for your book. You can see this content here within the build directory. I will now copy this link and paste it into my browser so that I may view the statically built content of my book. Here you can see that landing page my first part titled introduction, my first chapter, and then my first section here. And then my second part, and my second chapter there. Let's now publish this book so that it may be viewed by anyone on the internet. Navigate to the book directory and run the op pub command. This will publish the book to GitHub pages as well as create a branch within your repo named GitHub pages. You can see this GitHub Pages branch here, and that is the content of your book. And if you have multiple books, this is where the content for all of them will be stored. Now, if you go to Settings and then Pages, this is where you can verify if it has been deployed yet. It has not yet been deployed as it is still going through the build and deployment stage. Now that it says it has been deployed, let's verify this in the Pages. And you can see this link here. It says your site is live at this link. Now, if I go to visit this link, it doesn't show up. 
And that is because you have to add the name of the specific book to the end. So the specific book here is the my first book. So now I can access the book that I just created with this URL. It is now published to the internet for anybody to see. Now that you know how to create a new book, edit the configuration, add content, and publish the book, let's go into the OPE style container images. In this section, I will go over building a new container image, modifying that container image, building the image as an actual container, and then publishing the container image to a container registry such as Key.io. I recommend first creating the repository that will store your container images. In this demo, I'm gonna use Key.io. Navigate to Key.io and hit create new repository. In this demo, I will call it OPE demo. Make sure to make the repository public and then create the repository. Now that that's done, we're ready to start creating container images and storing them in this Key.io repo. To create the source for a new container, navigate to the containers directory within your project. Within this directory, run the op new container command. This command also takes the name of the container. I'll call this one my first container. Let's now take a look at the my first container directory. The base directory contains everything you need for configuring the base image. We use the make tool to efficiently build, run, tag, and publish the container image images based on these configuration files. There are two Docker files, build and customize. The build Docker file builds the container image based on these configurations. The customize Docker file takes a previously built container image and customizes the environment variables. This is useful if you have an old image you've built that you'd like to run in a cloud environment that has specific environmental requirements, such as for the user ID or the group ID. I will cover the customized target soon, but for now, let's make some changes to the base OPE image. The Python packages file specifies which packages you would like installed to the container. These all look good to me. I would, all, I would like all of these packages included in my resulting container but I would also like to add TensorFlow since I will be doing some machine learning work. So once I build the container, this package will be available to me. I'm also going to edit the OP book user and the OP container name. The OP book user is going to be the name of the user organization that the repo belongs to on Key.io. For me, it is my Key.io username so I will put that here. For the container name, that's the name of the actual repo. So for me, it's OP demo. So I will add that here. I will also change the customization name as that is used for the resulting image tag. I will call it my first image. And I'll also change the user ID. with the changes to the base OP image, I will run a make build within the container directory in order to build the image. The amount of time this takes may vary depending on your computer. Here you can see it pulling the minimal Jupyter Stacks image that the base OP image is built on top of. finished building and it took me a little less than eight minutes. We can see this built image by running the docker images command. Here you can see the image that we just built. Now in order to run it locally, I will run the make run beta command. This will start up a container with a Jupyter instance that I can access from this link on my browser. So I will now access that link. Now that I've accessed the Jupyter instance, I will verify that TensorFlow is installed in this container by opening up a terminal and running Mamba list and doing a grep for TensorFlow.
Here, you can see that TensorFlow was successfully installed in this container based on my configuration that I added to the Python packages file. One of the useful things that is a part of the OP software development kit is a testbook for manually testing OP containers. I will download this testbook and run it to show you some of the cool things that we can do. I'm going to do a git clone of the repo. And then I'm going to switch my branch to the testbook branch. Once this is done, you will be able to see the testbook here within the content directory. There are three important directories here, special displays, slides template, and animation examples. I'll open up special displays now and run it. So here you can see a sample image that uses some customized styles. Here you can see you can display a string with customized styles. You can even execute terminal shell commands and their results. Now I will go to the layout example IPYMB file to show you the RISE functionality within these containers. RISE is a package, a part of the Jupyter ecosystem that allows you to display Jupyter notebooks as slideshows. So for this notebook, I can display this as a slideshow. Then the last IPYMB file, the animations IPYMB, let's run this and see what cool things we see. So here you can do display bytes in special styles. You can also do uh, display a series of slide images, either playing as an animation or going one by one. You can display HTML tables. You can display websites within your Jupyter Notebooks. And you can have uh, other, uh, other interactive media. Or you can have videos. I want to briefly go over how to turn a Jupyter Notebook into a RISE presentation. So we have different cells. We have code cells and we have markdown cells. This first cell, I'm going to make a markdown cell. I'm just going to call it title. And then the second one is a code cell. I'm just going to have it print the hello world. Okay, and then I'm just going to have this third one be, I'm just going to say test. Okay, so now I have three cells. And so what I'm gonna do is at the top right, there's a property inspector button. And then under that, you can select what kind of slide it is. So we have different ones. We have slides, subslides, fragments. You can skip them. Um, I'm gonna do this first one as a slide, the markdown cell. And then I'm gonna do the second one, the code cell as another slide. And then I'm gonna have this third cell be a subslide. So now that I've selected what type of slide that I would like each cell to be, I can render the notebook as a presentation. So you can see here the title, and that's from that first cell. And then I go over one, and I can see that code cell that I executed and its output. And then rather than going right to another slide, because I specified this one as a subslide, I actually go down. So this is how you can turn a Jupyter Notebook into a RISE presentation. Now that you know how to modify and build the container, let's go over how to publish the container to Key.io. I already closed the Jupyter section in my terminal. Now, within the container directory, I'm going to run the make push command. 
This is going to push all the layers from my image to the container registry key IO. Now that the image is done being pushed, let's check the key IO repo. Here you can see that the image was successfully pushed to this repository. You can see two tags, one with the original tag and one with the dated tag. Now, if we had a cloud environment that we wanted to run this image in, we can provide it this repository with a link to this tagged image so that the image may be built as a container and then run in that environment. Now, I briefly mentioned the customized Docker file, so let's go over that. There is a make target, make customize, which takes an image that has already been stored within a container registry and modifies the environment variables. I will edit the customize from file and provided a link to the image that I just pushed to KIO. You can hit fetch tag here, do this, and then copy this link here. And I'll just put it in this text file, and then that is done. Then in the customize GID, customize group, customize name, and customize UID, you can customize this image depending on which environment variables you would like to see. So for this image, I'm going to change the customize UID. Now, if you remember in the image that I built, this was actually the user ID I used. So I'm gonna change it to, instead of a two at the front, I'll do a three. So when I build this, I will be able to verify if this is the correct UID. I'm also going to change customize name. This tag is added onto the base tag so that it can show that it's a customized image. So I'm just gonna change this to custom first OP. So I'm happy with my customizations. I changed the customized name and I changed the UID. And now I will run the make customize command. Now that the customized image is done building, I will run Docker images to see that it was in fact built. You can see it here. Notice that the size of the image is a little bit bigger than the original image that it was customized from. This is an active uh, problem that the OP team is trying to solve. Now I can run this customized image by running make cuss. Then this, I can copy this link here and paste it into my browser. Now I'm going to check to see if, if the user ID was in fact changed. And as you can see here, rather than it uh, starting with a two, it now starts with a three. So that is the customize stage within the make file. You've now seen how you can make your own OP project create your own book and publish it, as well as create your own OP style container images that are associated with the book. I'd like to now show you some published OP style books so that you can see what you can really do with the OP framework. First, I'd like to highlight the user guide as well as the contributor guide. The user guide is intended to teach you how to do a lot of what I went over today, authoring OP style books as well as setting up the associated OP container images. The contributor guide is intended to be a guide for those trying to contribute to the Open Education Software Development Kit. You can find both the user guide as well as the contributor guide within the README and the OP project repo within the OP effort organization on GitHub. Let's now take a look at some fully fledged OP textbooks. The first book is an operating systems textbook developed by Jonathan Apalu. As you can see, there is very rich teaching material within the book. It contains images, inline code, drop-down menus for exercises, inline executed bash commands, pop-out menus, and more. The second textbook is also an operating systems textbook. This one has multiple authors and it is used for Iran Krieger's operating systems course at Boston University. Both of these textbooks have their own OP style container images that students can use to access a container that has all the software needed to follow along with the course, textbook, and assignments. 
it would be very difficult to go over everything that you can do with Jupyter Book in this demo since it is a lot. And so what I would recommend is that you go to the Jupyter Book documentation and take a look at that so you can see how you can really customize your Jupyter Books. I would take a look at the missed markdown overview and then you can see the components and UI elements. You can show uh, how to do math and equations, the web and the internet features. Just take a look at this documentation so you can see how you can really customize your Jupyter book further and take it to the next level. That now concludes this demo. If anyone has any questions or concerns related to the Open Education Project, you can reach out to me at my Red Hat email, iSapleT at redhat.com. Thanks for watching.